there! Welcome to my channel. My name's Andrea and I love the Pilates method of exercise. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. Uh, today I have a video that was a request from a subscriber, Anish Kanoria. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And you had asked for a video to talk about how to get in and out of the side splits exercise on the reformer. And I am so glad you asked because Getting in and out of the side splits is really one of my pet peeves, and I would I like nothing better than to talk all about that. So let's just take a look at what the exercise is that we're talking about and get the reformer all set up. And I'm just going to come to the other side of my reformer so I can face you. At the end of the reformer routine, after running, after pelvic lift, perhaps after the control push-up series, we have the side splits exercise. And by that point in time, the handles and straps are in the well. The headpiece is still up from your previous uh, running and pelvic lift exercises. Let's put one spring on for the side splits and the foot bar down. And you'll need a pad either definitely here underneath the foot bar and I'm kind of letting the foot bar hold the pad in place. I'm giving plenty of space for my foot. And if you uh, need more traction or if you wear socks in your studio, you can also put another pad on the carriage or against the shoulder rest for where your other foot is going to end up. I'm working barefoot and so I'm not going to use this second pad. The way you'll get into the exercise it depends a little bit on what kind of reformer you have, and I just mentioned that because it's a safety concern. So this is a classical reformer made by Balanced Body, the Contrology reformer. If you have this reformer, or a Graz reformer, a Pilates Designs reformer, a classical apparatus, the carriage is heavy, and so the carriage will not move when you step onto it with one spring on. And if you have a more contemporary reformer, that what I'm telling you to do might not be the safest way to get on. And so if you feel like when you step both feet onto your carriage, it wants to move on you, then you probably learned a better way to get onto the reformer based on the reformer that you have. So safety first, no matter what I say, once you get into position to begin the exercise, then we can talk more universally. Okay, so here I am on my classical reformer. I've got a pad for my foot that's gonna end up on the frame, and I'm gonna step one foot at a time onto the carriage. So I'll step one foot up and then the other. And now I'm going to place my feet kind of right in the center of where one is going to go on the frame and one is going to go ultimately to the shoulder rest, even though today, depending on who you are, you might go, not go all the way to the shoulder rest. So I'm going to place one foot on the frame and then I'm just going to make sure that both of my feet are equally across from each other and they're not forward or back from each other. And this, now I'll become, begin my rant about getting into the side splits. This is where the exercise starts. The carriage is closed, you're in position, and you're gonna use all of your lift and your muscles to heel toe that foot away as much as you can sustain without opening the carriage and without cheating and leaning over to kind of scoot your foot out there. You want to feel like the inner thighs are working, the powerhouse, the center is working, so it's already preparing you for when you're going to move the carriage. Okay, so then you'll lift your center and press into the carriage and it'll go out. You'll hold for three counts and then you'll press into the carriage and lift yourself home. Let's do it again. So press down into the carriage, hold, and then lift to come back. Let's do it one more time. So you want to feel like everything that sits up on the short box is continuing to lift. The bottom, the waistline, everything goes up even though you are going down. And then you're going to down your heels into the mat and lift your center, your bottom, your waistline, everything coming up to close this frame. At this point, again, the carriage stays closed, your legs stay straight, and you're going to heel toe keeping the lift so that you can basically come back to where you started, leave a little spot for your other foot to join, and then you'll turn around facing the springs. And then here's where you're gonna begin your second side, again, right between the shoulder rest and the pad that's on the frame. 
So I'm going to step that foot over. Here's where the exercise begins. My bottom, my waistline is going up, 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 even though I'm getting a little bit shorter because my legs are going wider. And then we'll do it on this side. So lift your bottom and press down in your heels. And then press down in your heels and lift your bottom. And you'll have that um, pause out here for three counts because eventually some fancy things will happen. And then you're going to press down your heels and lift your bottom to close it again. One more time. That was a little noisy on my part. And then keep that lift. Heel toe back underneath yourself. Leave a spot for your other foot. And then you'll just step forward and off the carriage. So that moment of getting in position from standing norm, kind of normally to getting into that space, that's the part where you're really going to set up all the muscles that are working the exercise so that you don't kind of just flop yourself into that position and then try to find all your muscles to help you. So thank you so much for asking that question. And if you have anything else that I didn't mention in this video, or if you have a question about what I did mention, if it doesn't apply to exactly your piece of apparatus, do let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!